And if by chance an honest man like yourself should make enemies, then he would become my enemies. And then they would fear you. Marlon Brando in The Godfather. He very regretfully cannot accept this very generous award. And the reasons for this being are the treatment of American Indians today by the film industry. Will you welcome, please, Mr. Marlon Brando? If you had the Academy Awards night to do over again, would you do any of that differently? <laughs> I, I don't think so, no. They were booing because they thought, well, this, is, this moment is sacrosanct and you're ruining our fantasy with the intrusion of a little reality. And people actually don't realize how deeply these people are injured by seeing themselves represented, not so much the adults because they're already inured to that kind of pain and pressure, but uh, children, Indian children, seeing Indians represented as savage, as ugly, as nasty, vicious, drunken. They grow up only with a negative in image of themselves, and it's, it, it lasts a lifetime. Did you, did you expect the uh, kind of outrage that you got from people, uh, I believe, Clint Eastwood, yes. He uh, did his version of a joke. I don't know if I should present this award on behalf of all the cowboys shot in all the John Ford Westerns over the years. <laughs> the, uh... And then John Wayne looked like he was about ready to get a posse together. He looked, looked so sort of... Pow. Uh, does that, did that surprise you, that they would be angered, that you desecrated their cathedral? I, a... I wasn't surprised, no. I read a book called um, Indians of the Americas. After reading the book, realized that I knew nothing about the American Indian and that everything that we are taught about the American Indian is wrong. And our school books are uh, hopelessly lacking, perhaps criminally lacking, in uh, revealing what our relationship was with the Indian. When we hear, as we've heard throughout all our lives, no matter how old we are, that we are a country that stands for freedom, for rightness, for justice, uh, for everyone. USA, 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 we're the land of the free and the home of the brave. USA, USA, the stars and stripes are flying. Let's celebrate our freedom. Uh, it simply doesn't apply to those who are not white. Uh, it just simply doesn't apply. And we were the most rapacious, aggressive, destructive, torturing, monstrous people who swept from one coast to the other, murdering and causing mayhem among the Indians. There's one Indian in the... <laughs> And that isn't revealed, because we don't like that image of ourselves. Uh, we, we don't like to see us. We like to see ourselves as perhaps John Wayne sees us. But when you think of it, John Wayne represented strength. He represented power. He represented what the people are looking today, because we have exactly the opposite from John Wayne right now in this country. And he represented real strength and an inner strength that you don't see very often. That it seems ridiculous. Uh, he's still amazing to me, so. Uh, that... I don't know what to say about that. Yeah, well... Th Another thing, at a time when, when we say, especially, that we are going to keep our treaties and that we do keep our word, there have been nearly 400 treaties written by the United States in good faith with the Indians, and every single one of them was abrogated means broken or changed or altered. No, yeah, no exceptions. Somewhere, there's some, some person out there that tells us, just be quiet, be calm, everything will 
will right itself and and um, everybody will get their just desserts and uh, but it never happens if they just sit back and wait for the for white America to do something on, on their behalf to recognize their rights as a people to recognize the sovereign rights of well, for the Indians as a separate people as a separate political, cultural entity within the confines of the United States, nothing's going to happen. The Indians have to shuffle. And, uh... and we love John Wayne. We love John Wayne.